Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a hot piping cup of coffee or some green tea in your hand right now. Hot chocolate, whatever it might be, because we're gonna get straight on into the video. Right here in front of us, we have the Jinmitsu Z5-1 Fiber Laser Engraver. We're gonna go ahead and get this out of the box. And as we do, if you have not seen my Z3 engraver and cutter video, definitely look in the description box below. I will have this Z5-1 linked in the top link in the description box below. I'll also have the Z3, which I gave them away for Christmas, but I engraved my face onto Aspen custom coasters and the family loved it. So without further ado, let's get this out of the box. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we got a 2000 mm speed, 1064 nm wavelength and two watt optical power. We got another box. We're keeping this thing protected. Let's go ahead and lay the goodies out right over here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's walk through this here. We have our base plate here. Looks like our control arm here, little mounting bracket there. Our course, our laser engraver here. We got some nice ventilation, fan, your laser underneath. Of course, we're gonna get some beautiful shots of this. You have a little cap and your lens right here, as we can see, coming over to a handle as well. And then push button, and it looks like an LED light indicator right here on this side here. There is ventilation on both sides for that fan. And on the back of it here, we have our power input, a PC USB type C, another USB, it says, fan port and Z port and your on and off button right here. It was very well packaged inside the box. Sorry, the box was so big. I just kind of put all the accessories out here. So we have our safety glasses right here, as we can see, and they are the same pair that come with the Z3 as well. Have our accessory area here. Put that down for right now. You got a short USB to USB type C and a long USB to USB type C. We got our power adapter here and plug. Looks like a couple of color test sheets right here. Color test sheets, I should say. Some screws and hardware looks like a bracket and hardware as well your instruction manual definitely give that a read over before you do use it for the first time and inside this bag here looks like more color test sheets little usb drive for your printouts a small brush looks like a white marker like a white erase board marker and a couple tool allen wrenches to put the machine together Let's go ahead and piece this together. All right, guys, here's the machine. I'm gonna be quiet for a split second so you can hear the fan here. The fan does run loud, but again, if this is gonna be in your shop or studio, but it does run obviously continually, even if you're not using it, the fan will stay on. So just a little heads up about that one here. Uh, I do wanna make, definitely pay attention to what I'm about to say because the instruction manual is pretty basic. They do have the manual with the software on the USB stick, but I'm a visual person. I just, I hate reading a long PDF file. Hopefully this video will help you. Okay, so if you're doing text, this is just for text. Of course, you can do pictures as well. We'll get to that in a second, but for text, you kind of follow along with the you know simple instructions here. I'm gonna turn the machine off for a second here so we can talk a little bit better. So I added Chris to my text box right here and then you change the font and then it will change it over here and you can do it light and all sorts of different things. You can play around with the parameters and you can click on this H right here and you can click through all this. I'll let you guys go ahead and dial through the software a little bit yourselves. And again, it was a little confusing. Uh, I've been messing around with the machine for about an hour now, finally getting it dialed in. And so hopefully this saves you time here. Now, first and foremost, right off the bat, not all surfaces will work with this engraver. I tried it with wood and I tried it with cardboard and it didn't work, but it worked really, really nicely with gun metal right here so this is by the company extra this is like a little tool thing so you could do like ridge wallets extra wallets definitely get something like pieces of metal understand how it's doing it if it's going this way or if it's going this way so let, let's say I put this in here and I wanted Chris to be this direction Obviously it did it this direction. So just make sure you test it before you do it. And if it's too light, there is the repeat button for multiple applications right on the top of the unit right here. Now coming around to this side, I do wanna state that you need your Z port cable, which is provided. It's a small one going from the Z port to be able to lower it or raise it. If you disconnected this, it would not be able to lower or raise that cable has to be put in. This long USB cable goes to your computer and then this is the power one right here. Your on and off button of course is right here. Don't really know what this little black switch is for, 
but then a fan USB port is right here. But again, you can take it off the mount right here with this. You can pull it off and use it handheld if you want as well, or use it like this. Then of course, if you wanted to lock something down, then use these with the provided screws and Allen wrench to be able to lock it in if you were doing a lot of items. So I would lock that in exactly like that. I would just come up here, hit my repeat button, and I would have my shop name, or if I'm doing wedding gifts, Chris and his future bride, I don't know her name yet, God willing, and it would go Chris and something or other, marriage, and then the date, and I think that it would be a really cool thing. I'm really stoked with the outcome. A little learning curve, but look at Chris. That was only one go around, and I think that looks absolutely phenomenal. My brother's birthday is coming up. I'm thinking about maybe trying to do maybe like a personalized Yeti or something like that with his nickname on it. We'll try to figure out something like that for him. Maybe a Ridge wallet. But a really cool gift idea would be like the Ridge wallet. You can personalize. But again, you might have to definitely mess around with the colors. Here's a white extra wallet, and that one would work just beautifully. I might do a little more trial and error before I do try to engrave onto a, uh, an expensive item here. But plastic cell phone cases. Now, if you're going to be doing plastic, open up a window and have a little ventilation in there. Obviously, there's not good uh, chemicals inside of plastics, so you don't want to be breathing that in. When I did uh, this one, I actually didn't really see any smoke at all but I did wear my eye protection and then let's see if we can see this so this is a black color and I tried like a little yeah you can kind of see him right there he's kind of like this little like spaceman on a rocket and I did two go rounds with that but it just didn't engrave I could barely see it on uh, this black tin this is a groove life uh, wallet uh, case and so certain colors it might be a little interesting or you might have to play around test run stages, but just giving you some tips and let's go ahead and keep experimenting. All right, I switched Chris over to yellow to see if it shows up. So let me go ahead and show you now what you do here. So after you have your text lined up, this is where I was a little confused. You come down here to the bottom left and go ahead and click on red light F1 and then it marks it right here. Now, obviously, make sure the lens cap is off of the machine. And so that's how small it would come up. If we want to enlarge that, then within our box here, we're going to go ahead and just expand it with these little arrows around here. You just drag it a little bit. So let's just drag it like this. So it's nice and big. And then we're going to come over here to red light F1 and click on that and then you can see now it's enlarged it and then you go ahead and position it exactly where you want and it looks good right there i like that so what you do here is you push stop on that and then when you're ready to mark you click on mark or f2 so let me go ahead and put on my goggles or i should say eye protection click on mark f2 and it will go ahead and start here the goggles do, uh, the eye protection does a really good job here. But uh, let's go ahead and see how dark it gets on the black one. And then we might have to reconvene here. I'm not seeing any smoke lifting up um, on this particular case. I don't know if this is aluminum. I do see it showing up, but it's showing up in black. So this color of tin, it potentially could be aluminum, but it should work on aluminum nonetheless. But let's go ahead and see what we got here. It should be uh, almost done. It actually goes very quickly here. And while that's working here, directions do state, you kind of work with your speed, your power level, etc. here. Okay, it did show up very subtly in the uh, sunlight. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the repeat button one more time. Again, hit the repeat button without moving the object down here. I'm gonna hit the repeat button and it will go ahead and start once again. Okay, let's try to get that light right on it there. As you can see, that's two go arounds. Very, very subtle with this blackout. I'm pretty sure, yeah, I think that is aluminum. There, you can kind of see it a little bit better there, but we can see Chris right there. But obviously, shows up a lot better with something like this here in a color pattern like this. Okay, I'm gonna try it on a key, and this would be great for organization as well. So I've uh, parametered it 
right on the flat portion here. So let's go ahead and stop that. And we'll go ahead and mark F2 and put on our goggles. And that's how you know it's working there is I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but the laser goes to this like almost like a white. And look at that. Oh, let me uh, take off my goggles here for a second. That looks really cool. All right, so let me go ahead and show you that. Turn the machine off here for a second so we can talk. Now that is a little bit light, but that is super cool. So again, before you do it, definitely grab some scrap pieces to know uh, what and how it looks like. But look at that, Chris, right on my key right there. So cool. Probably should have done it twice for a little bit darker. But again, this was just once. So take a look at that compared to uh, that there. I'm pretty sure I just did this one once. I might have done it twice. All right, we've seen the text now. Let's go ahead and do a picture. Again, size it inside your box. I've marked it out. And this is actually on a construction ruler on the back side. So this would be great, like putting your name and phone number on it, lost, you know, etc. And let's begin. All right, this one is actually going on white and not black here. So that must be in my settings. Alrighty, take a look at my little moon man right there. Very, very cool, very, very subtle as well. That is a two go rounds on that particular one right there. And if you have a business, you can do all sorts of QR codes as well. You can do the new fancy ones where you can scan it. And that's over here in this section right here in the barcode tab right there all the cool scannable ones. Okay, I do wanna show you a phone case. This is after three passes. And with the software, you just have to play around with it a little bit. It does take a little bit of a learning curve, but some of the tips I've showed you in this video hopefully will help. It does not do color. I can't figure out how to do color on it. And then when you uh, import one of your own images or the image on the USB stick provided, it automatically kind of defaults to black and white. There are videos showing people making their own Valentine's Day cards with color, but I just can't figure that out for some reason. And again, when I import a photo, color photo, it actually uh, grays it out, black and whites it out. But you can do your own photos from your computer or camera roll as well. But again, this is three passes, looks a little bit better when there's kind of transparent light going through. I think this is just kind of like a, you know, plastic uh, rubberized-ish, mostly plastic case there. And a little figure there and YOLO. So that's pretty cool. You definitely can do some cool little things there as you can see kind of transparent there. I think that's pretty cool. Put your name on it, put your company's logo, etc. Found that it definitely works a lot better with like metal metal as we can see right here of course. And then this is either again aluminum or stainless steel and you just have to play around with it, do multiple passes. Now, because this is a review video, I do want to state that uh, some metals, it just doesn't work on for some reason. Uh, this phone is going to be uh, cycled out and I don't really care about reselling it. And I tried to do it three passes on the back side and just nothing really took to the back of this Samsung flip phone for some oddball reason. So again, for your metals like this, your key that we did earlier in the video, that's going to be your best bet. But definitely read below what other people are saying about it. Top link in the description box below once again before you do purchase it. Also, I do want to state that the software is only available with Windows, so you will need a Windows laptop or computer to be able to use the Z5 One. And then again, if you're working with like certain types of stainless steel, just pass it by, do it on a test strip, do multiple passes, it will actually start to etch deeper so you can see the image better. This is about two passes, like I said, and uh, this one was like a double up, like two images on one I was trying, and then this is one right here, as you can see. But coming up to this one, that's a little bit more in depth for two passes. Now, lastly, if you want to use it on wood engraving, check out the same company offers a smaller unit. This is the Z3. I will have this linked in the description box of the video as well, right below. I do have a full review on this one. It works on wood, etc. where the Z5 is more for metals. And this one is more for like arts and crafts. And again, you can read all about it. Top links in the description box below. But just like all my videos, please don't go into debt for anything I make a video about. But if you do have the cash and it does intrigue you, please go ahead and purchase on away. If you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button on your way out, helps the channel. Also subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this, as well as home DIY tech review videos. We will see you on the next one. My name's Chris.